What is up, you guys? Today, we're going to take a look at all the controls in FL Studio 21's new Lux Verb. Please like, subscribe, and let's get started. So here we have open an instance of Lux Verb. On the left, we have our input wet gain. And so what this will do is you see we have our dry and wet output. If I turn this down, I only have our dry output. There is no wet output because there is no input coming into the effect until. Now, and this is cool and good because it can be used for automating reverb throws. Right? Nifty little effect. Now on our input here, we have a high and low cut of course, going to be cutting the lows and cutting the highs. Now, the low cut is quote unquote a high pass. So everything above is going to be let through. So if we take a listen with the dry down. As you can see, as I turned it up, it's cutting everything below this frequency here and letting everything above go. High cut is the same thing, the opposite direction, so I can cut a bunch of the high end off. Right? Now we have our reverb decay here, which of course is how long is it going to take for the reverb to decay. As we turn it down, it's going to get shorter. As we turn it up, it gets longer. Now, we also have a brightness setting. The brightness setting is going to imitate hard surfaces. So the brighter it is, the harder or more reflective the surfaces are, which means the more high end you're actually going to get in your reverb, uh, the more it's down, the more dampened the high end is, and the more warm and full and less bright your reverb sounds. So if we take a listen, Right? Pretty obvious difference. We also have our reverb size in milliseconds. Zero through 10 would be like a plate kind of response. 10 to 50 would be more acoustic, and 50 and above would be like huge and uh, ginormous. So let's take a listen. Diffusion, the more diffusion is up, the more the reflections are getting broken up uh, before they end up getting finalized through the processing. So if we turn this down, the more kind of flat wall, you know, empty room with just walls kind of sound we're going to get, uh, the more it's turned up, the more objects are in the room to break up the reflections. Um, kind of like if you've seen diffusion panels at the back studios, it's the little wood panels and it's reflecting audio all kinds of different directions or whatever material they're using. Uh, that's what this is going to do. So let's listen. So instantly a little bit more linear, uh, more kind of build up frequencies if you listen closely. Versus if we turn it back up, all A, B. We have our pre-delay, and this can be set in milliseconds or synced to the project so that you can actually sync it to a note value. Uh, this is really great. A lot of times people will calculate their pre-delays, which includes math and opening up a calculator. And if you can just time sync via the plugin itself, like that, that's great. That's a good workflow right there. So awesome they have this feature. So character defines the tail end of the reverb. At 0.5, we have the smoothest, most diffused tail for the reverb. If we go under, it'll be grittier. If we go above, then it will be more drawn out and fuzzy.
right? Now our mod amp and mod frequency, this is going to be the amplitude of the modulation that controls the tail of our reverb, which is character effects. And mod frequency is going to control the frequency of that modulation. So if I turn up the amplitude, then we're going to get more of an audible wobble in our reverb tail. And if I turn up the frequency, it's going to change the low frequency oscillation that is happening. So the higher this is, the more noticeable it'll be. And the higher this is, the more noticeable it'll be. Also, our character here in the middle is smoothest. So you'll hear these most when you're on one side or the other. So let's take a listen. Set this to something moderate so we can hear. Okay, there we go. It's a little more moderate. So now we'll switch our character. Good times. Now, next thing we have here, which is actually really cool, is a freeze mode. So if we go freeze, whatever the input's at, it's going to freeze on that and continue our output until we turn that off. Sustain, on the other hand, is going to continue our output, but then add and build up and sustain whatever's coming into it. So if we take a listen to both of these, we'll start with freeze. Right? Or sustain. <laughs> and as you can see, the sustain, it just starts building up and adding more and more versus freeze is one flat one based off of whatever the input originally was when you froze it. So if I start with nothing playing and it's on freeze, we hear nothing because we didn't freeze anything. A sustain would continue to take input. Cool stuff. So our HQ option here, when it's on, actually preserves uh, high frequencies better. And when it's off, high frequencies become a little bit grittier and they die off sooner. The sacrifice here is CPU usage. When HQ is on, it's going to use more CPU than if HQ was off. So totally up to you for a decision on whether you want that on or off. Next, we have our feedback option. This is cool because it has pitch shift options that we can play with and modulate, which is really cool. We have a high cut and low cut for our feedback as well, so we can filter our feedback before we reintroduce itself. From my understanding, it does get reintroduced after our diffusion. I'm not sure if that's before our character options or if it's actually just after this reverb section altogether. However, this is just to create more character and give an interesting tail to the end of your reverb. Now, we also have our delay here. This delay is actually going to delay the audio before it gets fed back into the loop, which again can create more interesting effects. Also time syncable. Our reverb mix is also going to be the mix of reverb that is on the audio before it gets fed back into the loop. Very interesting effect. So if we take a listen here. Very interesting effect. Now jumping over to our output, course dry and wet. We also have peak frequency and the peak frequency is actually going to be a uh, peak filter according to this game. So it's going to create a resonance. So I could actually turn this up and sweep for a resonance I like. We also have our peak Q, which of course is going to be how sharp or how obtuse that is. And we have a width option, which set to zero is mono. 
anything above 1.25 is going to create a wider image. Our next section is pretty cool. This bottom area is an envelope section. And so we can envelope the decay or the entire wet signal. Our scale option here, as I turn this down, anything below this threshold will start being affected. As I turn it up, anything below this threshold will also start being affected. And as you'll see, we're scaling down, so we're almost creating a gate with our reverb by turning this down. We also have a low cut, which will help us cut low frequencies, and an offset. And the offset is going to offset our modulation one direction or the other. And then an attack and a decay which is going to be the attack and decay of the effect. If I want it really abrupt, I'll turn both all the way down. Or if I want it really slow, I can up them both. Now, smooth, what smooth is going to do is it's actually going to take all this modulation and it's going to smooth it all out to try and match the actual signal flow uh, that's not being controlled by an envelope. So with our drastic effects, for example, like when we have these all the way down, if we turn up smooth, it's going to start smoothing those out according to our reverb signal. So if we take a listen... Right, smoothed out all the crazy quickness we had going on. Next, we have our side chain. We can turn off or on here, and we can link this to a mixer track. Now, in order to link it to a mixer track, a mixer track has to be ran to it. So I just ran that mixer track, and now it is available. Insert three. And insert three is what I ran to the track that has our Lux Fur. If you're going to do that, remember to turn this knob down so you don't get actual signal going into your Lux Verb from what you want to use to sidechain it. We've got two visual options here, Spectrum and Peaks. Spectrum is that spectral view that gives you kind of a uh, frequency display from bottom to top, and peaks will actually just be the peaks there. And you can also have both. Now, if I go to decay, that's going to control decay instead of the wet of the reverb. And so this is actually a better way to gate the reverb if you wanted to. Really cool effect, multiple options you can use. Uh, we can also turn the envelope off, of course. And that, my friends, is FL Studio 21's Lux Verb. We covered the very interesting reverb effects, the way we feed back into the reverb to create interesting and creative tales to the reverb, as well as the envelope options for us to do modulation and or gating on our reverb wet signal and or delay. I hope this video was helpful. If you like this video, please like this video. If you have any comments, please comment. I always appreciate a subscribe. It's Warren with Scale Audio. Adios. Mm -hmm.